Some viewers from my previous videos asked if I would check out Nextcloud as part of my Ugreen NAS series and create a setup video. Nextcloud is a free and open source alternative to cloud productivity services like Google Workplace and Microsoft 365. If you're interested in taking more control of your own data and don't want to pay for a suite of apps for writing, creating spreadsheets and using cloud storage, Nextcloud could be a great option for you. You can enjoy a lot of the same features as established services without a subscription and also increase your privacy by self-hosting all your files on a private server. In this video, I explain how to set up Nextcloud on a Ugreen NAS using Docker, as well as walking through the steps for setting up your Nextcloud account. The best way to think of Nextcloud is that it's a complete open source platform for productivity. There's a free version for home and student users, but Nextcloud also offers premium versions for companies and other professional organizations. Just like Google Workspace and Microsoft 365, you can create, upload, access, share, and edit documents online. What's more, Nextcloud also provides its own versions of apps for communicating using chat and also video calls. Plus, if you'd like to keep all your productivity in one place, you can manage your existing email and calendars by linking your accounts. All the features are available for mobile and web. While collaboration is a key focus, individuals can also choose Nextcloud as a private alternative for personal productivity where your data isn't accessible by third parties. There are some limitations which you should be aware of. The first is that unless you have the necessary networking expertise, you will need additional help to have access to your data outside of your office or home network. By default, Nextcloud is configured for users on the same internal network. Similar to open source services such as Jellyfin and Image, Nextcloud requires either a physical private server or a cloud server for remote accessibility. However, there is a third alternative that I demonstrate later in this video using Tailscale. To begin with, you'll want to download and install Docker on your Ugreen NAS if you don't already have it. This can be done through UGOS, either via a web browser or the official UGOS application on your computer. As covered in my previous video, Docker is a program that enables you to manage a variety of applications on your Ugreen NAS. Docker can be thought of as a platform with its own collection of programs, known as containers. These containers are self-contained programs designed to execute specific tasks. This process is essential for creating the Nextcloud container and setting up your Nextcloud account. Just like Jellyfin and Image, you'll first need to create the folders where all your Nextcloud data will live on your Ugreen NAS. These folders are the repositories for different kinds of data necessary for Nextcloud to operate. Open your Ugreen app or log into your NAS via the web. Under Files, navigate to your Docker folder and then create a new subfolder called Nextcloud. Within this folder, you'll need to create folders called db, data, config, and redis. The next step is to deploy your Nextcloud container with Docker Compose. This is the configuration code that creates your Nextcloud server on your NAS, enabling Nextcloud to organize your data and files. I've included a link to the YAML Docker Compose in the description. As before in my other videos, remember to use Notepad or a similar app to copy the data. If you use another text-based app, there's a high probability you will copy invisible characters that will stop the container from working properly. Next, you'll need to make some edits. This includes creating passwords and adding your NAS's IP address to connect it to the web interface. There are three passwords you'll need to create and add to the YAML, and one of the passwords you'll use twice. Replace the whole section of each password, including the angle brackets, with the secure passwords of your own choosing. The longer and more secure, the better, but avoid special symbols at the start of each password, as they won't be accepted when trying to deploy the container. The next step is to add the IP address of your NAS to the YAML. Again, replacing the placeholder information, including the angle brackets. The IP address can either be found on the control panel and then file service, or the URL bar if you're logging in via the web. 
You'll also need to replace the time zone information based on your own location. You can find the link in the description that will enable you to find the correct syntax for your own setup. For more advanced users, you can change the port number if you already know that the default 8080 port is in use by another container or application. Otherwise, you can leave this as default. With your Docker Compose now completed, the next step is to copy and paste it into Docker for deployment. In Docker on your Ugreen NAS using UGOS, navigate to Project and then click Create. Next, name the container Nextcloud in lowercase. The storage path will be automatically completed. Then, in the Compose configuration, click on the first space by the number 1 and paste your YAML Docker Compose. Now you can click Deploy. It might take a few minutes to complete, so leave it running and eventually the OK button will be highlighted so that you can click it. Your container will now be running, ready for the next step of your Nextcloud setup. The next step is to install all the necessary Nextcloud files on your NAS. To start, you'll copy and paste the NAS's IP address and then the port number to your address bar. This will launch the Nextcloud setup process. Then you need to create your own Nextcloud admin username and a secure password. Your username can be anything you want it to be. Once completed, this will start the installation process on your NAS. The process will take several minutes again. Once complete, you'll automatically be redirected to the welcome landing page and guided through the walkthrough for setting up your Nextcloud services. This will also enable you to install your desktop app. The desktop app enables you to have folders accessible in Windows Explorer on your computer linked to your Nextcloud storage for efficiency. I won't be walking through how to use all of Nextcloud features in this video, however if you're interested in a walkthrough video please comment below. Nextcloud also has an official app which can be found on the Google Play Store or Apple App Store. On first use you'll be prompted to add your IP address and port number for your Nextcloud configuration before being asked to log into your account. Once logged in, you can have access to all the same functionality as the web version. Like Jellyfin and Image, Nextcloud is a free open source service requiring self-configuration for remote access. To access Nextcloud outside of your home network, you must set up remote access yourself. There is no centralized infrastructure provided for internet access to your Nextcloud account. The simplest method is to use Tailscale VPN or a similar VPN unless you have the necessary expertise to create your own hosting solution. For a detailed description of Tailscale, check out my previous video about how to set up Jellyfin Remote Access using Tailscale. That video gives you the entry-level walkthrough on understanding and setting up Tailscale on your NAS. Just like Jellyfin, you'll need to use your unique Tailscale IP and the port number for the Nextcloud container to access Nextcloud when you're away from your home network. The NAS's IP address can be found on your Tailscale machine list. The port number can be found in the web URL interface and by default is 8080. Now when you want to access Nextcloud remotely, you must remember to turn on your Tailscale app on your phone or computer to connect to your NAS at home. Thank you for watching and as always it would be great if you were to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.